So we're with Moody Siegel, hey. lead animator for um, this little guy Cosmo. So um, you've been telling telling me how you go from animating on the screen to this physical little robot. Um, it's much more like sort of acting and performance. And I realised, you know, you're talking about, you know, he gets angry and you sort of you take that stance yourself as you animate it. Is, is it is it like that? Is it like performing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's really hard to make it believable. Uh, so basically. When I'm trying to make Cosmo angry, I'm trying to make myself angry to, to figure out what it is, what it's looked like, what are the details. Uh, Cosmo is a very simple character, he only has a lift in the eyes. So it's not like you can um, actually take one to one what you do in, a, in front of the camera and copy it into Cosmo. There's some translation you have to do. Uh, but basically, that's what you do. You find the essence of what makes him uh, angry in context. Uh, you play it yourself, you record yourself, and then you try to figure out how to apply it to the robot. I think what I hadn't expected was that you'd then do that on the computer. So you use the, the like, um, animation software that you'd use to create films or games. We're animating in CG world, see what it looks like in, in CG, and then um, export that information onto the robot. I know there's some things that you can't do with Cosmo because obviously he has to be a robot and sort of look around the environment. Are there, are there limits and tensions there too? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you work in, in a software like Maya or basically in traditional uh, um, game environment, you can expect a lot more of what's going to happen. Uh, it's, it's all in CG environment uh, um, and uh, it's all software. When you introduce a robot that is hardware, you start to look into things of, of things in the real world that change friction. Uh, you know, you can have them on different tables and desks and chairs and whatnot. And all those things we need to sort of find a way to take into considerations. So what might be one scenario in a game that is pretty simple, we might be facing four different scenarios and we need to address each one. So we had a little uh, scenario where I animated um, um, Cosmo when he's on his face, like this. So he needs to, needs to get back, back up right ways. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the uh, uh, other animator who worked on this, uh, he basically she put him not the way I intended him to be. Uh, and instead of when I animated him, we just fell back. She put the lift in a way that made him do a somersault. Uh -huh. And we saw that, we were like, whoa! Okay, we didn't think that's gonna happen, but it just did, so we're gonna keep it. Uh, uh, so that's one of the fun things about hardware is sometimes it's hard when you can't expect everything, but sometimes you get those golden moments that you just didn't expect and just happened, so you're, you own it. I, I feel we have something that animators never really had a chance to work with. Uh, in that sense where, um, you know, there's a famous book uh, that the old nine old men from Disney wrote. Uh, uh, it's called The Illusion of Life. Um, and I feel with Cosmo, the way he reacts to the world, even though he's a very simple character compared to a uh, feature film, what you see on film, there's still like this extra step that I feel like we did with Cosmo. He, he's just a little bit more alive in certain ways than other characters can be. Great, well, I mean, I've, I've seen him today and I can't wait to get him home. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's how great. I'd like to, to meet my kids. Um, so I think you've done a really good job. Um, thanks for telling us how, how you achieved that with Cosmo. Absolutely, it was a pleasure.